Jack uh, had this wonderful idea for this research lab, which became Xerox Park. I proposed to my boss, the chairman, the chief executive, that uh, we ought to create a laboratory devoted to the digital world. You know, in our business, there are places that, and times, where they're just magical places to be. Xerox Park was probably one of the first incubators, a term that we use a lot today, uh, an incubator of ideas that became very important in Silicon Valley. The, the icons and the uh, graphic interface was there to, for all to see in 73 and 74 by these brilliant young guys. Laser printing, networking, notebook computing, personal computing, graphical interface computing. Steve Jobs picked up the graphic user interface technology as a result of a visit to Park. To me, I think of it as kind of a Camelot, you know, one bright, one bright moment shining. Unquestionably, Paul was interested in the process of inventing, invention, and bringing that invention into the world. I first learned about Paul through his sequence on distributed communications, uh, which he published at RAND in the early 1960s, because section nine of that, which most people don't realize is there, is on security. What really struck me about his experience at RAND and working on packet switching and trying to figure out, as I understand it, they were trying to figure out a way to secure essentially communication so that it couldn't couldn't be knocked out with, for instance, a nuclear bomb, which everybody was pretty worried about at that time. If a country's defenses would fall apart under the first attack, it would create a temptation for someone to fire first. If both countries had controlled communication systems that were able to withstand the attack, then a much more stable environment results. He had a great ability to look ahead and see what's happening. In 1967, for example, he wrote a paper, published a paper, that described how communication technology was going to uh, provide all kinds of new services in the year 2000. And he basically, amazingly, described what we have today with the Internet. Well, Jack's an information theorist. Some would say he's a computer scientist, but I like to claim him as a communications information theorist. And uh, Jack worked on a theory of data sets, how different data sets could be combined, how information could be compressed. If you just convert it to binary digits, it's inefficient. You should convert it to as few binary digits as possible and techniques led to algorithms and actual hardware that could be used to condense the memory and get more and more messages, songs, information on hard drives, on flash drives, on tape drives. I mean, he really uh, opened up the idea of using information theory and communications theory to the magnetic recording industry and to the magnetic media industry. He's a absolutely wonderful teacher. He explained things so clearly. He is incredibly helpful to his students. And the next one was, I didn't get to him. Uh, Somehow, so I end up with students that just are good. You want to have the guidance and you want to have the help for someone who has so much experience, so you can eventually do it yourself. What I like to do is to give them a little bit of a lead and then back off. And when they come to me and they say, you know what, I don't know how to do this. I say, no kidding. And, um, and I make them go back and think more about it. I want to be as a professor like Jack. And basically everything which he gives to us is something which uh, I hope that we'll be able to, to continue with that.